Okay, this year we're going to talk about the top three tips for using social media in 2017. Obviously in 2017 it's become pretty much accepted that if your insurance agency is not using social media, you're falling behind. I mean obviously it's become a great tool for retention, staying in front of clients. It's become a great way to generate referrals by dripping on people and letting them know um, that you know, you're the expert and that you're the guru. As we know with insurance, very rarely do people buy it impulsively. You know, a life event tends to happen that wakes them up and makes them say, okay, I need help now, who can I talk to? And at that point, they usually go to their friends and family and say, do you know anyone who's smart who can help you with this? And that's the beauty of social media. It's, it's just a huge amount of people socially talking. And if we can position our insurance operation correctly, we can get the referrals we're after. Not price shoppers, but referrals. So I think step one is to kind of evaluate your puzzle. And what I mean by your puzzle is I'm a believer that there's a lot more to social media than just a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page. It's part of a bigger puzzle. It's part of your entire web presence. So I think the biggest piece of any insurance operations web presence is obviously your agency website. So that's the first thing you want to evaluate. Do you have a website that obviously tells people who you are and how you can help them, but more importantly, has some functionality built into it? In 2017, you've got to get away from these big billboard websites. You have to have a site that actually helps people. Um, you know, if you're a life and health agent, people should be able to go onto your site and buy some of the secondary products right from the site, do provider searches, um, all that kind of stuff. If you're a PNC operation, people should be able to you know, file claims, make payments, add vehicles, request certificates, all that kind of stuff. So obviously that's step one. Make sure you have your website looking good. Then step two is you really need to have a Facebook business page and a LinkedIn page at the bare minimum. Those pages should be set up, they should look good, um, and they should be in place. You know, I think it would be good to have a blog. Obviously, you know, time has shown that those have, have been helpful. And I think it would be good if you have what I call internet listings, a Google business listing, a Yelp listing, a Monta listing. Those are things that, again, are just doorways into your web presence. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is before you get really excited about going crazy on Facebook or LinkedIn, make sure you have all these other things in place because what ends up happening is, is once you start to post on social media, people start to check you out. They check out your website. They check out these other things. If they are not set up correctly, you're not going to get any momentum. You're going to fizzle real quick and you're going to get frustrated. So step one, make sure the puzzle is looking good. Step two is probably the most important thing when it comes to social media. Post, post, and then keep posting more. Um, you know, and you'll kind of see I have in red. The key to success is consistency. The key to failure is inconsistency. Um, you know, we've been helping insurance agents here for about 10 years now with social media, and it is 100% true that if you can kind of have that marathon approach where you're a post, you know, where you're posting good content, you know, at least three or four times a week, you are going to be successful. There's no doubt in my mind. If you're one of these people that posts, you know, January 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and then you get busy, and then you post January 20th and then it turns into May 10th, and then it turns into you know, November 20th, you are absolutely going to fail. And not only that, it has a negative effect on your brand. Whether you realize it or not, people look at that and they say, you know, why did this person start something and not finish it? And you know, that's just, it's not a good way to project yourself. So in my opinion, the key to social media is don't overthink it. You want to post consistently at least three or four times a week. You should not be spending more than one or two minutes a day posting. I would suggest just finding a good article that's relevant to your products, maybe just a quick tip um, or you know, just a reminder, a deadline reminder. Things like that are going to have a good positive effect on your distribution, on the people who are following your pages. Remember, people are not going on to social media to read your articles, but in my opinion, they do see them. It does register somewhere in their brain. So if you can keep posting good, educational, political, politically correct content on a daily basis, like I said, it's like drip marketing. It drips, it drips, it drips. 
And then eventually when something happens to them and it wakes them up, then they're going to kind of take a deeper look at your puzzle, your website, all that kind of stuff, and give you a good chance to get that referral. Um, the one thing you do not want to do is you do not want to consistently solicit on social media. Then you're going to project yourself as a solicitor. And at the end of the day, when you do that, people tune you out, whether you realize it or not. So step three kind of contradicts a little bit to what I just said. But I think step three in 2017 is if you want to be aggressive and you want to solicit, that's fine. Just don't do it with your daily posting. If you're, gonna, if you're going to solicit, you want to use what's called the boosting uh, tool, especially on Facebook. And basically what boosting is, is it's like a pay-per-click advertising where you can set up a specific post, uh, click the boost button under it, put in a dollar amount, and uh, based on the dollar amount you put in, and certainly 5 or $10 is going to get you results, it will increase the amount of people your post goes to and thus allow you to kind of be more aggressive. And I know a lot of people in the insurance industry, it's kind of in our blood to be aggressive and to try to solicit and try to sell. That's fine. You don't want to do it, like I said, consistently because it has the, you know, it has a negative effect. But once maybe a month, you do a special boost where, you know, you put a little time and thought into it. I would highly suggest you set up what's called a landing page. So maybe you're doing a specific boost uh, and your target market is you know, commercial insurance, maybe independent contractors. You want to kind of send out just a message to them, hey, you know, we specialize in this and this is what we can offer you. And if you're interested, click here to learn more. When they click there, they'll go to your landing page where maybe there's a little fillable form that they can fill out and then they become like a lead. But more importantly, now they're kind of on your website as well. Um, so anyway. Uh, step three this year is boosting is a, is a big deal. There is results to be had. Um, I think the most important tip I, I have on here is the last one, which is expect a little trial and error. You know, it's very hard to use pay-per-click advertising and hit a home run on your first at bat. You know, you go in, you do a little bit, you see how it goes, and you fine-tune and, and go from there. So appreciate everyone's time this week on the podcast. Again, I think the most important three things you want to think about in 2017 are, you know, look at your overall puzzle, website, social presence, online listings. Are they set up? Are they looking good? Two, are you being consistent? If you're not posting consistently, you certainly cannot do the boosting because people will look at your page and say, eh, I'm not that impressed. So you want to make sure that one and two are in place before you start to try to be aggressive and use some of the boosting tools. Next week, we'll talk a little bit more about boosting strategy, and I think that that will give you more insight on what we were kind of trying to push you towards. Thanks again, and talk to everyone soon.